So I'm going to show you all of the skills required for doing this. So I'm going to start a brand new sheet and essentially um, we start by recording the independent variable. So this independent variable is the one I change. So I'm changing the length. So I just simply type length, comma, space, L for length, comma, space, and then in brackets, the units. We're using meters. And then I push return or enter, depending on the brand of keyboard you have. Now that looks really small, so I'm going to zoom in. Now what you'll notice is this text is overhanging that box. So we can hover our mouse from the A to the B and in between you'll notice the mouse changes. If I double click with the mouse looking like that, it will automatically change the width to suit the text. The next thing we've got is time. That's a T and it's measured in S for seconds. But what if your mini teacher tells you, hey, you've got to do three trials. So you go trial one, you go trial two, trial three. If you could type those, but the good thing about Excel is it knows there's a number on the end. And if I fill the series, so watching that tiny little dot on the bottom right that I'm circling, when I move my mouse over it, watch it goes from white to black. And I can hold with my left mouse button and drag across and it changes it all for me. And I might go, oh, that's in the wrong place. Well, I can cut and paste, but I could also in the middle, um, can usually just drag, nope, it's not gonna let me. Command X for a Mac or Control X if you're on a PC, and then Control V. So copy, paste, so I just moved that down there. Um, this one, this time applies to all. We're also going to have an average, so we'll have average E R A G E time for 10 swings. Now that text has clearly gone way over the box, so we're going to click wrap text up here from the home ribbon. And then it's gone a little too tall, so I'll just make some little adjustments of width. And I'll double click this, it'll adjust to the height for the row. And then this is average time. It's mostly the same, so I'll save myself a bunch of time. Average time for one swing. So you'll notice I clicked up here in the formula bar, and that allowed me to edit the text that's in there. Now this one, I want the same width, so I can actually highlight both rows, and if I just grab that width, make a tiny adjustment, the other one will move with it. So that's a good time saver. Next, I need my length. So I ask my class to start with 0 0.50 so that's 50 centimeters watch when I push return the decimal the zero that disappeared so again on the home ribbon we've got these two buttons so the one on the left if I click that that's increased decimal so that's what I'm after now I wanted my class to change their length and decrease it by five centimeters each time, or 0 0.05 meters. So I'm gonna type a formula to do this rather than do it the long way. I push equals. Now I could click on the cell, the cell is called A3, or I could just push the up key on the keyboard. That's the way I usually do it. And then I'm going to subtract 0 0.05 and I push return. So that answer is 0.45 and I'm gonna drag that down. The good thing is it kept the, um, the decimal uh, place value. If I didn't, for example, if I'll just do one down here for roughly 0.5, excuse me, 0.5, and then equals the one above it, minus 0.05, you'll equals the one above it, minus 0.05. There we go, and you'll notice that's a larger amount. If I drag that down, you'll see um, an inconsistent amount of decimal places. So it depends which order you do it in. So you'd go along and click it like that. And that's not what we need. I was just showing you how you may have done it. So then you go and do the experiment. Now, I didn't do the experiment. I had two lovely girls in my class do that, and I stole their data. So this is their real data that they use, so I'm just going to copy that. So you can go um, Control-C or Command-C, depending which type of laptop you've got, or you can right-click and choose Copy. And then I'm going to paste it. So I'm going to Command-V. There's the data that my 
lovely girls used or uh, collected I should say um, and I just noticed that I didn't have that little cell there so again I can just click on that formula grab that bottom right uh, little dot make sure you've got the little black cross for your cursor the next part is how do you get an average time for 10 swings now this is going to be a huge time saver compared to doing it on paper with a calculator. I type equals, start typing average, A, V, E, and then it pops up here, most recently used, but it also, based on spelling, it will suggest these other functions. So you could click that, and it's got average, even st puts the bracket in there for you. So if you were just typing, you'd have to type the exact spelling, average, and then start bracket. And I'm going to highlight these three cells so it doesn't matter which side you start from but I click and hold my finger down and I drag across or you can just simply type B3 semicolon D3 and then you have to close the bracket and then push return this is a little error bar that little green part don't worry about it then I can click that cell and fill that series so that's the average time for 10 swings but I want the average time for one swing so I'm in this cell F3 I'm going to click equal type equals push the left because that's easier and I'm going to divide by 10 because I had 10 swings and I push enter or return now there's a massive number of decimal places we use stopwatches I don't know what kind of device you'd need to get that at level of accuracy so I'm going to decrease the decimal places to match the device we used, which goes to two decimal places. So this cell here, I can click and drag. Now, I've done this sort of thing before the long way with pen and paper. Um, this certainly is faster once you get the skills. So I'm going to put all the borders on. And this part here, time, I'm going to highlight all of these cells across the top and I'm going to merge and center because that is all of these columns here are time and seconds. The next part is ever so slightly harder so I've got a little cheat. So I'm going to click cell A3 and I'm going to highlight these two. Then I'm going to go to the insert menu, come across to recommended charts, skip that one, go to XY scatter and I'll choose the one that's got a line in there already. That's not what I'm after because it's doing one trial, but it's a little skip that we can just kind of come across and see where my cursor is. It goes from a plus when it's right on the edge, goes to a little white hand, looks a little bit like Mickey Mouse. And then I'm going to grab that and pull across. Don't pull down or up because you'll see the little colored boxes. I want to come across here and drop it, let go, and then the chart will make a little adjustment. So you'll see it's got little wiggles. We don't do a line from dot to dot. That's incorrect. I wish Excel was a little different. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on it. That's a left click. Now with all of the, these points uh, highlighted, if you've double clicked, you'll need to restart by deselecting and then select the line again. I'm going to right click and then add trend line. So right click, add trend line. And these different types of trend lines um, I'm going to use power and I'm also going to put a couple of other things on there R squared that tells me how close to the actual um, um, theoretical value it is and that's matching really really highly um, we'll come back to this form this trend line so I'm gonna see it's a little bit easier to highlight there um, I could click it and I want to uh, forecast backwards so I'm going to go backwards by 0.1 period, and I'll push return, and there you go. That's what we're expecting to see, is a little graph back down here like that, if it fits the power um, uh, trend line options. You'll see other ones that you could tick, and you go, well, that, that's not it. But if we tick the correct one, we get a nice looking graph. There's a few things missing from this graph at the moment, and there's something else that I want to take away. This dark line, I'm going to click on that dark line. Actually, I might have to click on the dots. There we go. And then I'm going to click on this bucket. The line, I want no solid line. Goodbye, solid line. And if we're being kind of picky, we'll change these dots, the markers, um, the marker options. I'm going to use built-in, and I'm going to choose these little pluses. 
so they are a little bit more like what I would expect my class to do and I might increase the size just to make it a bit more visible on screen for uh, showing my class but you don't need to go that big. It's missing labels and units on the axes. So the next thing that I'm going to do, I'll deselect the graph and reselect it. It's not necessary, but just in case uh, something's going wrong, you might try that. So with this chart selected, chart design appears. If it's not selected like this, goodbye chart design up the top ribbon here. So click on your chart. And then we're going to use quick layout. So on the left here, quick layout, and I'm going to choose this one because it gives me a title, axis title. Oh no, it's made my... Uh, trend line disappear so right click add trend line um, power extend back by 0.1 tab and I'll put that R squared back on there cool so now I've got these titles I'll start down here and some people ask me which ones which well if you look at your actual numbers you'll see that length goes from 0.1 to 0.5 that's what I changed, that's my independent variable. So that's what's going on here, 0.1 to 0.5. Let's move that R squared out the way. Just trying to move the element. So I'll double click in this box, make sure that you've actually got a either a highlighted word or you'll see that cursor blinking and you can just go control A or command A depending on your laptop and this one is exactly as it is in the table so this is length comma L comma and then in brackets M for meters because that's the unit I used always put the unit in uh, brackets I'm going to double click in here, I didn't double click effectively, so there we go, double click, command A, highlight all, start typing, I don't even have to push backspace or delete, um, this one is time, comma, T, comma, in brackets, S for seconds, and our chart title, up here, the simplest way, command A, is whatever's on the Y axis versus whatever's on the X axis, so time versus length and then you can give it some context time versus length for a pendulum so there we have it we've got a graph one last thing to add these vertical lines they're missing so again with the chart highlighted from the chart design ribbon add a single element add element and I go to grid lines and I'm going to choose primary major vertical there are other little minor ones that you can put on in between if that's necessary but that's what i needed i hope this is helpful and good luck plenty of practice and it will start to become and flow for you